what you I start would... off with saying you don't know. There's yeah. only unknowing. But yeah. then you come back and say, I'm human. And just one other point as we're moving through, as we're feeling through each other's sort of mind, mind maps, um, yeah. you say what is is all there is. And but that that then is obviously not is. So what is, is neither is nor not is. It's a, it's a mystery. Yes, I agree. I, I would agree with you that all of this is a mystery. Yeah. We, nobody, there's no one standing outside of this with a perspective mm. on it. I, we agree on that. So that's already, we're, we're partway up the mountain. We'll put a piton in there, right? We're good there because a lot of people would think this, this is an absurd conversation on the face of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we agree on that. There's no one standing outside of, there isn't really even, even an outside. It's hard to. Totally. Put, right. It's hard to put. But that's the end of the conversation, really. Well, that's the end of it for you. But yes. that, that's right. And okay. When I first uh, came upon uh, Tony Parsons work some years ago, I heard an interview with him. And in the interview, he expressed an entire autobiography that he had made a lot of money in construction and had a Ferrari and all the rest of this stuff and told this whole story and then lapsed into, but there's nothing, nothing ever happened. Yeah. Well, if nothing ever happened, then why tell this story? What's the point? Yeah, and, well, there isn't a point to anything, really, is well, there? But, 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 he, but he came off so smug. Yeah, know? I know. I think I do in these conversations as well. And you call it a certainty. And so that smugness comes across, that certainty comes across as a smugness. But really, it's just a lack of doubt. There's no certainty in anything because it could be anything, like you said. This could be whatever. There's no knowing. Yes, okay. We, but, there's also, but there's also no doubt. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that at all. I don't agree. Yeah, but well, I did. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. No, no. If, it's true that it's, it's true, I think, that we cannot know anything definitively. I'll, I'll go there with you. Yeah. Although you, you seem rather definite about a lot of things. Um, so, that, see, there's some, the jargon is difficult. Uh, you use some mm. tricky... I don't mean you're not trying to deceive. That's not what I mean. But mm. when I, but when I say tricky, I mean it's it's fraught. Your, your jargon is fraught. It doesn't really get anywhere. It's it's not going anywhere. It has no intention of going anywhere. Let me leave your end of it aside. Just tell you how I see it. Yeah, I see things. Um, naturalistically in other words i can't know this but i assume that i am a mammal living on the earth that this universe exists that there really are stars and planets there's really a material world there's dna that pr that produces various life forms and that i'm one of those life forms do I know that? Of course, I can't know it. I could be dreaming the whole thing. This could be the matrix for all I know. Mm. But mm. it's highly probable in, in my estimation that naturalism is truer than the way that you are seeing the world. And so I would... I'll, I'll listen to you and even be influenced by some of the things you say. I think some of the things you say are quite interesting. As I read earlier, I agree with you about many things, but not on the certainty that you bring to it. Not at all. I think that you could be entirely deluded and that what you are calling this message is not a truth or a non-truth. It's a point of view and you have it. You, you will deny that. You'll say there's no myself to have it. Mm. I get that. But for me, that doesn't work at all um, because psychologically, whether this is a fact of the universe or not, I don't know. But psychologically, we really do exist. We really are people psychologically. And psychologically, we really care about many things. Yeah, it's not that caring can't arise. It's just that nobody does it. 
Yeah, I'll, I can go on. So, with... so, so the cloud of knowing mm -hmm. is a dream, a dream of ownership of the appearance. The one that then says caring is important, that anything in that sense is important. And that importance come out, comes out of a sense of personal lack. So things become important to me because I have to find something. I have an intention to make this a wholesome, heart-filled appearance or experience for me. For me, that's just a part of a dream of a center in this midst of this experience of knowing. What's obvious, and just because I don't have a better word for that, is that there's simply this, and there's nobody in it. And that can appear as caring, it can appear also cold, it can appear as heartless, and it can appear as love, it can appear as anything. Yeah, okay, well there's, <laughs> the word dream is very, is very difficult. You, you've used it, but yes, in a sense, we're dreaming right now. I will agree well, with no, that. Well, no, I wouldn't say we're dreaming. I wouldn't say that. Okay. What would oh, you how say? about an illusion? Is that easier for you? Illusion? Um, well, yes, because I like to use the word dream to mean what occurs when we're sleeping at night. Yeah, yeah. Suppose I get cut right across the wrist and I'm bleeding badly. Hmm. Is that an illusion or am I bleeding? No, the illusion, the illusion is that it's happening to a center knowing experience. Now the brain functions and my, may or may not do something about the cut, but the illusion is the center um, owner of the appearance. That's uh, the illusion. Well, so if this occurred to you, mm -hmm. would you say it's only an illusion? You're not listening. That, what I, I mean, that, not to be crass, but I'm saying the illusion isn't the body or the cutting or the bleeding or the pain or that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. The illusion is the center experiencer that relates everything to itself, that lives in a sense of something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm listening as best I can. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, I should say parenthetically that, I, that you're very unpopular with certain people and I heard from a no lot of- No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I heard from a lot of them and, um, you know, they, imagine that Robert's going to get in there and vanquish Jim or something, but that's not my intention. Please understand. I, I'm, I yeah, wanna, yeah, I, no, I'm fine. I, but but I, that's really not my intention. I, yeah, I want, it doesn't matter. It's fine. And even if it was, it's all, it really is in order. It's, it, there's truly, and I obviously can't impart that or it's not being believed or heard. There is no intention here. There just isn't. And the funny thing is there isn't there either but there might be the illusion that there is. Um, well, that's a judgment. Okay. I've heard so, that before. Okay. Well, well, from my perspective, you're constantly judging, right. constantly. I mean, I, I don't see you not judging. You, you bring okay. a kind of, I mean, the words that you use, this is self-evident is a mm. tremendous judgment. I don't know if you see I don't that. know that I said self-evident. I say obvious. Well, okay. Yeah. For you, self-evident might be my word for obvious. Mm. And for you, it's airtight. In other words, that's the way it is. There is no other. This mess, like when, you see, it's, it's partly jargon, Jim. I think the jargon, mm -hmm. which you apparently inherited, not, did not create, Maybe that's unfortunate mm. that it unfolded that way. Maybe if you'd had the experience, see, I believe you had the experience. I've had that experience, similar experience. You don't mm. think it's an experience, I get that, but <laughs> that's the problem with this jargon. You see, then there's really nothing to discuss. Mm. What I imagine is that you had a kind of experience of no self, 
And, and that was shocking. What do I make of this? And that's when you kind of wandered around in your mind and then you met Tony and as you said it, he was discussing this in a way that made sense to you and that kind of cleared things up. I get, that's pretty much how I understood your, your story. Well, yeah. I'm not that different from that. I had many years ago, a very amazing awakening and I had, it took me years to cope with it and kind of figure out how to deal with that as, a, as an ordinary person. And yeah. um, so it's the jargon You see that when you say this message, that sounds as if there's a message like floating around in space somewhere. Yeah. But no, this is your message. It's if not. You, well, that's you, the whole point. But if you didn't speak it, it wouldn't be here. Well, I mean, in this, I mean, here, you're saying that I'm speaking it. And I, I have to, I have to just go there. And there's no one saying this. There's no one over there either. That, that's what now, you So this, so this what, isn't, this isn't, what, a, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a, a following um, deduction from an experience that happened years ago. It is the aliveness that is, that has no knower. Yeah, well, we agree there. Okay. We agree. But there's there. no, that, but that isn't an individual. That's just aliveness. Yes. So no one could take, no yes. one could take ownership for this message. Well, oh no, you see that, see, that's another step. Mm. That's another step. I agree with you. It's just this aliveness. That's all that we know. We do know. No, we don't know that. Well, okay. I don't know that. Okay. Nobody knows that. I agree yeah. with you. We don't know yeah. what anything is. We don't, yeah. we, we don't know what anything is. You and I agree. Yeah. Okay. So. But I stop there. Well, I don't stop there, but for me, that's the end of it. Right. And then after that, there's just happening. There's well, just happening. No, you see, that's, I don't stop there. That's, I know. I know. That's where we differ. That's, that's exactly. Okay. So maybe that's it. And we should take some questions. Yeah, that's all right. If, if uh, our questions here in the Zoom can steer the conversation <laughs> a little bit forward, because uh, right now we have already two people with their hand, uh, three people already with their hands up for a long time. So first would be Göran Karlberg. Could you unmute yourself? And whoever asks a question, please turn on your video if that's possible. Thank you, Michael and Marcus. And thank you for doing this. And uh, nice to meet you, Robert and Jim. And um, Hello. The, question, the question I have is, is it's like <clears throat> for several years I've been on the spiritual path and, and uh, started re reading Robert's books a few years ago. Uh, I had a belief in a higher power earlier, but now I would say I'm an agnostic. And uh, through the years, it's like been, I am, uh, I, I don't know it. I don't know. I don't know like anything more than this happening right now. But I also know that I am a person that in, in a way that have different needs, you know, I, I want to take care of my kids. I have a girlfriend and, and uh, <clears throat> so it's some way I have a person operating in the world. And, and also I see like how I could, um, coming see you Jim is is like I visited Robert's page and I saw the the interview with Sam and I listened to that talk and uh, I liked it and and I I see some big similarities between between you two and um, <clears throat> so the question is I understand I have a, a sense of yeah there's not the person and it, it's somehow getting clearer to me that, that there is no Yoran inside of me that operating this body. So, so that is starting somehow to reveal. But, uh, but to say that, that everything that happens hasn't led to this moment, mm. it seems a bit strange, but I understand that this moment is self-existent without everything I have done earlier. I understand that. But it seems like I've done something to, to end up 
in this meeting. Do you understand how I mean? Maybe Robert, you want to take it first? Should we both answer it just in different ways? Or? Well, go ahead. Can I answer it? Go ahead, go ahead, Jim. I mean, Robert and I both said that, well, he suggested it was like a sausage and you just cut it up. There's no real cause and effect. So your experience will be that this happening is the beginning of everything. So if you have a memory, it's gonna be this appearing as that. Hmm. So there's no way to point out a real past. Can I talk about cause and effect? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'll talk I mean, about it. Can at any time, but I think this is sort of set up a little bit differently. How about okay. if how about if Robert and I answer the question and then you jump okay, in okay. afterwards and explain yes. your point of view? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's my answer about cause and effect and you having you showing up here. I mean, something I would add as far as what comes out of this is that the experience that you did something is part of the illusory experience that there was a real past that leads to a real future. And that's just part of the, I think, illusion of personal. So Jim, you mean that because everything that is, is just right now? No, that's well, the... see, see, there isn't a now. <clears throat> when there's, now would suggest that there's some other time that's different than what is. So you could be now or you could not be now. What, what, what's being pointed to here is there is only what is, no matter okay. what it appears as. So there is absolutely nothing to hold on to. It's just is. There's, there's just, well, is notness. It is mm. and isn't because it's as we've agreed on, it's unknowing, appearing. Mm. Mm. So that would be my answer. Yeah, thanks. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go back to um, cause and effect? No, we have I, also Robert, please. If, if Robert, if you could mention anything about it. Yeah, sure. If, if you got my long question, it was a, a too long introduction. I'm sorry for that one. No, that, you, you're Goran, right? Are, are you yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hi, it's nice to see you. Yeah, same, Robert. Um, my experience is like this. I don't know if anything leads to anything because I don't know what anything is. I find myself here. There is a sense of self that I experience, but I don't know to what that refers. Um, it could be an entirely illusory or there may really be selves. I don't think anyone is standing outside of his or her own experience to be able to make that distinction. That's, that's my way of understanding life, <laughs> but I'm not, it doesn't explain anything. It's, it's just the way I, I feel. I, I wake up in the morning. I don't try to be, I just am. Mm. There's a sense of self. It, it could be an illusion. I don't know if it's an illusion or it isn't, but since it's there, I have to deal with it. Right? But when I wake up in the morning, I've been dreaming. I've, there's, there's been all kinds of imagery, uh, dogs running up the hillside, whatever, on fire. <laughs> Then that stops and the, and the actual material world, apparent material world is there. I didn't make it, I didn't put it there, I didn't create it as far as I know, but I have to deal with it. And I just get into dealing with it while knowing that my dealing with it's not going to lead anywhere, it's just what what must occur, the ball is rolling. And, and so I've never been on a spiritual search, never. Not, in, not for a moment in my life was I looking for some solution to being alive. I'm just completely involved in, in being alive, completely. I take it for granted. I, I, I don't question it. 
I don't know if that makes it clear. I don't think there's anything, any, you say you're on a spiritual path. There is no path from here to here. This is it. At some point, one realizes there's no alternative. This is it. Whatever I feel and think is what I feel and think. I'm not producing that and I can't choose to feel and think otherwise. This just is what it is. I think where Jim and I differ is he's saying it, it isn't really. There's no, the sense of self he is sure is an illusion. I'm not sure of that at all. I just don't know what it is or to what it refers. And I think that's the difference between us if I have that correct. I don't know if that answers your question, Goran. Yeah, because I, I don't think, I'm not on a spiritual quest anymore because it ended by reading your books. So I, I'm, I'm quite content with who, whom I am now, but, but it seems like they're an essence of Yaran because it seems in retrospective, uh, it seems like I behave like a, a person sometimes and i guess you do the same maybe both of you like special mm. foods or love someone or mm. but and and that is reoccurring mm. but uh, yep. so it, do you understand what is there an essence i i understand that yeah i guess there is no specific person named yaran who mm. has, who is like operating in the world but there is an essence of yaran is there an I would call it a character. Yeah, yeah, a character, yeah. Yeah. But that isn't the person. It's like a role, or how do you say, what do you say, Jim? Well, you, you know, if we're going to discuss, so explanations, the explanation would be conditioning and experience together sort of creates a sort of a character. Mm. So your preferences for certain things or the way you live your life or what seems to happen or how you like to decorate. Those are parts of your, of your character. Mm. Uh, Jim, I'd like to ask you to, to elucidate that a bit further or carry that out a little further. What do you mean by character? What, what is that? Well, like I just said, you know, the DNA of the body and the conditioning over time and um, preferences, beliefs, whatever, whatever is still, whatever lingers in there. Um, as, as, but the, I think where we, where we would differ is for, for me, me, that's not happening to anyone. That's just truly an explanation. So it's just a story. It has no relevance to anything. Okay. And there we would differ because for you, everything has relevance. It seems. Well, matters. I, I would agree that it's just a story. Everything mm -hmm. in a sense is just a story. Everything is just a story in a certain sense. I mean, if you don't know the words and the, and the, the poetry, you can't sing the song. I mean, we, we all have, but some stories are very much better than others is how mm. I understand this. Mm. So a story that's about love and caring for me is far superior to a story, a story about hate and destruction. It just is. Why I feel that way, I don't know. And who mm. feels that way, I cannot put a finger on that either. So you and I agree to a certain extent. Mm. But, but those feelings are there. Mm. You call it character. That's a character. Robert, yeah. Robert, the Robert character thinks he has such feelings, but the character is only an illusion. Yeah, that, I think that- I wouldn't call the character an illusion. The central knower to the experience is the illusion. Oh, I, I believe that. I, so oh, okay. you, you and I agree on that. There is no central. Yeah. There is no central knower. There just mm. is what is. There, the yeah. feeling, okay, so see, we, we really agree. That's an essential point. It may not be your, your message. <laughs> the, oh, message. I think that is, that is the only thing that actually is being said. There are certain consequences that might not be readily apparent that there is no center experiencer to what's happening. Oh, I think, but, I, I, I think we're just getting somewhere now. This is very interesting. I'm really happy to hear you say that. 
because I do like a lot of the things you say. And if, if you really mean what you're saying now, of course, there's no one to really mean it. There's no, I get that. There's no central narrow. But if you, if we concur that there's no myself doing any of this, that just doesn't exist at all. There's not a, a little homunculus in somewhere inside my brain directing the show here. If we agree on that, I think that's 99% of it. Yeah. Mm. Because no one can choose that anyway. Totally. Well, so you and I really do agree, very, I think. And it, I don't think, I don't really see any disagreement. I mm. think I've cracked the code here. Oh. <laughs> I was calling jargon. See what I was calling jargon. I didn't mean to be insulting, but that might be a little bit insulting, I, but I didn't mean it that way. I just meant it's a patois. It's different from normal speech or ordinary mm. talk. Mm. Um, yeah, I, 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 and the way I understand it is to go back to what you were saying, your character sees it this way and my character sees it this way and the mm. characters are not real. Mm. necessarily they might be but we have no way of judging that we don't know what that is so we agree i don't i don't actually <laughs> not what you sorry i don't mean to be difficult but the way you just said it no i wouldn't agree that the characters have different perspective the character is is a description of of the body plus conditioning it has nothing to do with a perspective or a central knower yeah, okay. so this body this body prefers. Okay, so we don't we don't agree because don't, what Gorin was calling what Gorin was calling the essence mm. might or might not might or might not exist, and I have no way of judging that. You you mm. have a way apparently of saying that doesn't exist. Well, I'm, I'm making a differentiation between the experience of the owner, the central knower, mm -hmm. and a character. Because there's obviously a, a, a function of the body with the conditioning and the DNA and whatever else you, you, you know, whatever else, that, that that functioning happens and it has different expressions, obviously, between Robert and Jim and, and Goran. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that that is simply unknowing appearing, unknowing appearing as that. It has no value in mm -hmm. that sense. Yeah, well, it might be enjoyed or not enjoyed, but it has no value. Right, that's very similar to Buddhism, you know. Oh, okay. There, there, I've heard that. Yes, it's very similar. It's it's um, no, there's no there's no essence to anything. Yeah. Totally, okay. it's empty. Right. Okay, so that's I get that. Hmm. I I just don't know if there is an essence or not. I have no way of standing outside of this experience and judging anything about it. I just well, it's a revelation. It it just falls away, and so it's the same. It's the same as as this could easily say this is in Vienna. You could call that a conviction that just seems to be obvious that this is in Vienna. So, and it's the same with that central experience, knowing the I am, that literally falls away as a knowing, and it's not. It's not that it actually falls away. One of the one of the very interesting things about it is that it. It, the falling away is actually the recognition that it never really happened. There never was a central knower. There never is one. That's why I can say there isn't one there either. Sounds okay. like a conviction, I know, but what am I going to well, do? No, I understand that it, that's a point that really can't be expressed in language. Mm. I, I, mm. And I understand that what I was calling jargon is your way of trying to do your best to express the inexpressible. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you that. I'm not, yeah. I'm, I don't mean to critique your language any, any further. I think that we're, yeah. both, we're both doing our best. It's not, yeah. these are hard things to discuss. Mm. Um, well, we pretty much agree, although it seems more to me that we agree than it does to you. I get that. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're able to see me. Yes. Yeah, my question is to uh, Jim. And I just say a hi to Robert because the first time I'm seeing him uh, online. Hello, so hello, Bob. Hello. hello, hello, Bob. And question is to Jim. Uh, Jim, um, you, 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 you're one of the you know famous uh, non-dual speakers 
internationally. The first time I'm speaking to you, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, when I speak to you, I think I'm speaking to a lot of speakers like you who uh, bring this message of Tony Parson post-1995. And my question to you is, who are you? Nothing. What's speaking there is to no, me? There is there. no you. That's Nothing. Nothing. But the thing that might not be obvious is nobody's asking either. There's no, no, just... no, no. That is... Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand that, Jim. But uh, you can't, you know, like you can't think for me. I accept what you say that nobody's speaking. But from my perspective as a speaker, I'm not an enlightened person. I'm a speaker. So from my perspective, there is somebody speaking here because I yeah. have an voter ID. I have an you know election card. I have an identity card from for my nation, passport, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think you too have it. And uh, what I uh, commonly ask the speakers is that you know a very simple childish question. How do you mm. go back home? You don't go back to the next home. Mm. You go back to your home. You identify, you have a memory base. You identify you are living in 12 Lexington Avenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you go back. But you keep denying that there is no you inside. That mm. I find as a speaker, who's, as a seeker, who is not enlightened, a bit hard to accept. So how do you explain mm. that to a seeker like me? I, I can't. You obviously are convinced that something else is happening, but that's all right. I can't convince you of anything. I'm not here to convince you of anything. All I can do is suggest that there isn't anyone. There is no one in there, nobody speaking. And your, your card, your identity card and your home and all of that aren't evidence that there is anyone. But there is somebody inside, you know, who, who remembers no, there a lot of... No, memory happens, but nobody, there's, not, there's no need for anybody to be in there for it to happen. It actually happens without anyone. But it happens when there's that experience of separation. It happens within the cloud of knowing or the cloud of ownership. And so then you rightly say, what you say isn't in my experience. And you're absolutely correct. It's not in your experience and it never will be. So what would be And your so advice? it makes no sense. It's, it's unbelievable until it's undeniable. Let me comment. Ilongo, let me just put my oar in the water here for a moment. Yeah. Um, because I agree with what Jim is saying. There doesn't have to be a myself here for all of this to be happening. It could be that what's happening all comes together and produces a sense of self out of just spare parts that a sense of self is, is a kind of um, confection that, we, that is made out of various experiences. The experience of a body, the experience of perceptions, thoughts, and feelings, and consciousness of all that may then create a, a fictional self that's at the center of all of that, when really all of this is just going on and happening without any self um, doing it or making it or responsible for it. I don't, I don't know if that's what Jim is saying or not, but that's how yeah, I see it. Yeah, I understand. No, but are you saying that there is a self or are you saying there is no self? I'm saying no one is, in, from my point of view, no one is in a position to know that and, and never has been. So that all the spiritual um, chit chat about this is just chit chat. It doesn't necessarily refer to anything real. So if I get you right, you are neither supporting a self, neither a non-self. There's neither a self nor a non-self. Those are just concepts. What, what, what exists just exists, what, whatever, regardless of what anybody thinks about it. This yeah, is all, I get that. This is all just here including yeah, the sense of self. If there's a sense of self, that's part of what's here. If there's no sense of self, which is what Jim is saying about himself, then that's the way the cookie crumbles. No one's doing it. No okay. one's making it. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> My question back to Jim. Um, now you are enlightened, am I right? No. When you, when you were young, you got enlightened, right? No. Was that a method for your enlightenment so that I, you know, didn't I hear me? I said no. <laughs> no, no, I, no, no. I heard you. I heard you speaking to Bob about half an hour back that you got enlightened very young. Enlightened. That was the word you used. Well, nobody's enlightened. 
Enlightenment, as far as I'm concerned, is a state. Um, this okay. isn't in a state. There's something that stopped happening called I am. And that stopping happening is revealed in the end of it that never really happened. And that is the experience that what's happening is real. It's just, it's just an illusion. Yeah, but something happened in your life where there was an I am and then an I am collapsed. Am I right? That, that's, that's, that would be logical. That's not what happened. There seemed to be a dream of I am that made this seem to be part of a story. Okay, I That follow dream your... or illusion of I am stopped happening, revealing this was never, this is not a story. It's simply... I understand that. Okay, but I'm not... Yeah, I understand that. I'll follow your dictionary. Uh, so when this I am, which was illogical, I won't use the word jargon, I'll use the word dictionary. So yeah. Jim's dictionary where the I am collapsed, illogically or logically, whatever. Before okay. that, before that in the story, in the La La Land there story, is no before there that. Was, this, is, this is before that. Okay, was there a method? No, this is before that. If this is everything, what's the method to this? It sounds very similar to what Robert would say. No, you say there was an I am and then the I am was not there. No, I said there was an I am. And when it fell away, it was revealed that it never happened. And what's yeah, revealed is there's only, there's only this. Yeah, but I'll just, you know, copy paste your own words. I know, the but I you're am... going to try, you're trying to put, you're trying to put this into a story. The story of this, meaning this is revealed to someone, only re is real in the dream or the illusion of the individual. Okay, this, okay, I'll go back so, to your own. So the dream of the individual, when it stopped happening, what's revealed is it never happened. It didn't lead to this. There's nothing that leads to this. Okay, in the dream of, or in the illusion of Jim, when the I am yeah. collapsed, was there a method? Yeah. Was there a well, method as a seeker? Part of the experience of the individual, what you're saying is what can you do to Correct. find what is. Correct. And that is exactly where the freedom of what is hides in the experience that something needs to happen for it to be free already. That's an illusion. Nothing you has were to once happen. Like, you were once like us seekers seeking, right? That, that's a, that was an illusion. But it, that, it, that happened on a calendar time. You can go back to, you know, 2000 or 2005. But that's this, appearing as a calendar time. But you do agree this meeting has been now for two hours. Do you accept that or not on, on your cell no, phone? No, I don't. Because this, the two hours that you're talking about is this appearing as two hours. Show me the last hour. It, no you matter what you show me, no matter what you yeah. show me, it's going to be this. Yeah, but you can see it on your computer clock, right? But that's this appearing as a computer clock saying we've been talking for two hours. Okay, if you don't look at the computer clock, if you go out and see the sun, you can see the sun moving from the east to the west. What is that? Yeah, but, yeah, but, but that would still be this appearing as the sun. But then uh, uh, non-dual, uh, the FM, uh, the, the, the conference, you know, they fixed up a time about a week ago there and they said, and we all came together in this. How do you say it is not there? Though it is happening uh, in the now, it happened in the well, past. Well, there's no, yeah. <laughs> if you have a now, you have the past. The, I'm not suggesting there's a now that's separate than the past. The suggestion no. is there's only what seems to be. And now you're telling me what you remember about a time set for the FM, which is what is appearing as you telling me about a time that FM nothing was, was, um, was set for this meeting. No, I, I, agree to, to you. I agree that the present is the actual reality. But as you speak and I speak across the internet, at the speed of light, something is happening. There is a transmission. Ah, uh, yeah, no, there isn't. Your image, my image, though it is ha though it is landing in the present, I do agree. There is a transmission it, of electromagnetic impulses. It's not landing in the present. There is only present, although I wouldn't use that word. So you advise no methods for the seekers who follow you. What method could there be to find what's already? See, that is that is one which has been happening after Tony Parson in 1995. But there have been a lot of teachers like Osho or Ramana Maharishi, you know, Papaji, etc., etc., who had methods, Vedic methods, thousands and thousands of years in India. There are yeah. methods people have advised. You advise no method. I mean, if I am to be clear, That's, am I right? Absolutely. Because there's no one to tell. 
See what you you're coming from a position that there's a difference between you and me. There isn't. There is no difference. There is nothing to get. The only difference is the claim that something needs to happen for us to be the same. And the response is we're already the same. See, you have a different body. Forget the mind. I have a different body. We are continents across. How do you say we are the same? Well, but it's just what is appearing as continents across. No, what is I agree, but bodies are different. Yeah, difference appearing as what is. So there is no teaching. So what is the point in seekers following speakers? There's uh, no point to anything really. The only point is for the individual f f feeling like it has to find meaning and purpose. There's no need for this to become anything. It's already unconditionally free. Anarchy. No, the reason why a seeker looks for enlightenment is there is an end of suffering. You would agree on that? Yes, that's right. That's right. But what and this we are is seeking. the end of suffering. No, we are not seeking you know, a heavenly place with angels singing, trumpets blaring. No, no, no. We are not looking at that. We are just looking at a simple stopping of human suffering. And that yes. we see through teachers and, and gurus. And you think that's going to come through a new, another experience. You not think that if you know that. enough, or you experience enough, or if I tell you what to do, that that will lead to the end of suffering. And the suggestion is, the end of suffering is this already. Suffering is the claim that something needs to happen. But Jim, there have been thousands of followers for you, lakhs of followers, millions, uh, who have been following and have not got enlightened. And there have been others who have uh, followed a certain method and who have got enlightened. So it's a very tricky situation seekers are in. Should we follow a method or we should not follow a method? I know. It's, 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 it's fraught with doubt, the experience of the seeker. So I have, I have a suggestion. Why not all the ND speakers form an international association? Like, you see, I am a doctor. We have an association for hypertension, diabetes. There is an international yeah. association. You get together and yeah. you form a consensus statement for the year 2021 and update it every year. Yeah. Because what you, you like, What should we put in the statement? <laughs> Pardon? What do you want in the statement? What should the see, statement say? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you. See, there are two groups of speakers. One say there is a method. Others say there is no yeah. method. That's and right. even among speakers who say there is no method, you still say there is a lot of doubt in the dictionary or the words that you use, which lands seekers into a lot of doubt. Yeah. See, we keep on yeah. hearing the same thing for 25 years after Tony Parson, there is nothing, there is nothing. But then you see speakers, <laughs> you know, they, they travel across the globe, they go to India, they go to China, Japan, they go to different European countries, attend everything, yeah. but the message yeah. is nothing. So what are yeah. they gaining from this? Nothing, there's nothing to gain. How about um, I tell you about my story? Steve's going to give you an answer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but I want, before you do, I'd like to interject here, please. Um, is my video on? Everyone's seeing yeah, it. Yeah, see you. Um, I, I think um, that you missed something, Yolongo, that, that Jim said. You just talked over it. And it seemed to me that if you really heard that, uh, the question would be solved, at least as far as it can be in words. What he said is that suffering is a claim that something needs to happen. Now, I think at that point, if you'd heard it, you would look self-reflexively at the uh, e egocentric predicament that you're in of feeling like a separate self that needs to something to happen in order to stop your suffering. That that's what's being pointed. That is, out. Yeah, that's, but that is what every that is what every human being wants. But but no, not every human being wants that. And I, that's what I mean by the egocentric, the, the egocentric predicament. You're in that predicament. Not everyone. Uh, it's is. not it just wait, wait, let me finish. It just seems to you that everyone is in that predicament because that is the predicament that you that you take your own perceptions and project that out onto the world as if that's all that could be. That's why you don't hear what Jim is saying. You just missed it. Talk right over it. You asked him, if you're such a great spiritual teacher, man, how about throwing me a few pearls? And he really got to it. 
but you didn't that you you got what you asked for, but you didn't appreciate it. You didn't even hear it. What he said is, I'm going to repeat it because I agree with it. Suffering is a claim that something needs to happen. And when we see that nothing is really happening except this being. Is this Steve means, speaking to me? I'm not able to. Is this Steve speaking to me? No, it's I'm, Robert. I'm, I'm, this is Robert. Robert, Robert. Robert. okay, okay. Robert. Ilongo, okay. what I'm saying, yeah, I know, I know that you follow my writings and you've seen my point of view. Yeah, so correct. I'm not expressing that now. What I'm expressing is, from my point of view, you asked for something, but when it was given, when, when when it was given to you, you turned your hearing off and just no, no, th no, 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 Robert. That is your interpretation of what I said. I, I'll repeat what Sir, I said. Wait, stop. Yes, it's my fucking interpretation. That's the point, and so is yours. No, no, no. I'm speaking to Jim. You're coming in between and interpreting what I am telling. Oh. I would like to say to Jim again that I understand what he says, but uh, because you have come in, Robert, I will tell you too. Generally, uh, every human being in life, when they have pain, they want a solution. I agree I with pain. Robert. Who's that? Jim. Yeah. Jim, what I was trying to tell along with Robert. I know, what but he I said agree is, with Robert. That's okay. But then you don't have anything to say now. I mean, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to say. Okay, no, I just, have to say. just as long, just as long as you understand that that. I understood very clearly what Robert said. Very oh, clear. He's very okay. clear in this uh, yeah. elucidation of what he said. He said I didn't understand. I nested over it. No, I I understand what Jim has said. That you know, mm. suffering happens, and he used the word egocentric. That's cool. Everybody's egocentric, uh, but. A human being, when there is suffering, for example, if there is a pain because a stone fell on your uh, toe, you need to go for a doctor. You need to put an ice on that. That is a normal human mm. predicament because you are a clothed animal. You mm. want pleasure and pain, and you don't. You are even when you are in a non-duality, you don't shy away from the pain mm. and the pleasure. So the suffering, when I am telling you, is the pain I have. I am asking for a solution, and I don't think there's anything wrong. And from Jim, I could get nothing. Yes. Or if Jim can explain to me. In, an, in some other way, you know, like, you know, like Ilongo, you couldn't nope. understand, I would be willing to accept, but that's what Bo Robert was trying to tell. I understood Jim's yes. uh, answer was that you couldn't. And uh, Robert was trying to tell that suffering is egocentric. Maybe, maybe not. But when there is pain, I want a solution. That's the reason why seekers come to, sp to spiritual world, that they expect mm -hmm. the teachers to give them a solution. And uh, Jim is telling me there is no solution. That's fine Absolutely. with me. I can only say that, could you Maybe redo your work and say if there is anything you can remember, <laughs> you can tell us. You can always review the literature. The review of literature is there. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when, uh, you know, as a doctor, you make a wrong diagnosis or something is not jelly, you go back to the uh, roots, you go back to the history, the clinical science investigations, and then you check if anything is wrong and you redo it. That's, I think, a sign of, you know, a, a, a teacher who would like to keep on uh, refreshing what they are teaching. Because we are yeah. drawing a blank with the speakers. That's, you know, my, yeah. uh, I've been seeking for 30 years. And, uh, you know, when I come across uh, the brand of speakers like Jim Newman, initially when I hear t Tony Parsons, it's fine initially, 20 years ago. But then after 24 years, Jim saying the same thing, I feel there should be an upgradation like a version 2021. <laughs> That's my earnest request <laughs> as a speaker. Oh, boy. oh, I love you, man. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. And Robert, I understand where you come from. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I thought it was Steve speaking. You know what, Ilango, to tell you the truth, I don't think yeah. you understood what I said at all. Because if you did, there wouldn't be anything else to say. Yeah, that'd be the end. Of I'm still listening. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm still listening. I, I will say it yeah. again. There is, there's yeah. suffering in life on the physical level, clearly. If you have a toothache, you have to go to the dentist to stop the toothache. That's clear. Yeah. No one would yeah. be enough of an idiot to say that doesn't exist. It exists. Yeah. Yeah. But this psychological suffering is what, we're, is what, what you're saying yes. is inevitable. Yes, yes. And yes. it's not inevitable. It's possible to be in a place of non-suffering psychologically. It's just possible. People are there. You're not there. And so you project this onto everyone. You're suffering. You're, you're projecting. You're, that's what I, when I, I, let me just finish. 
I am not saying that egocentricism is the cause of suffering. What I'm saying is you don't see what suffering really is because you, you imagine that everyone feels just the way you do. And they don't. Jim doesn't. He didn't agree with what you were saying. I don't either. I, I agree with what Jim was saying. Suffering is just the need for something to happen. If you don't need anything to happen, you just sit here. Okay. There's no suffering. If I get the toothache, then I need something to happen. I have to go to the dentist. But if I don't have a toothache and I'm just sitting here, I don't suffer psychologically. I don't need anything to happen. Nothing. I can just sit here. That's how we got Jim and I got together here in the first place. Apparently, he said, he said, I could just starve to death and that would be good. And I had said that a couple of years ago at a meeting that I don't mind, I'll sit on the park bench and starve to death. That's okay. Now that is, there's no suffering in it. No suffering in that. Robert, can I, can I ask now a question to you? Of course. Uh, I understood what you said. Uh, is there, a, I mean, Jim, you know, is a vetoes any method at all to come out of the suffering. Do you have any suggestion to, to me that how do I remove my psychological suffering, not body suffering, the psychological suffering? Is there a method? Is there a way? Is it, are you, are you asking me what? I'm not clear. You, is there a uh, method? See, when I have a toothache, when I have a toothache, I go to the dentist. That is a body suffering. Yes. I am talking to you about what you just now spoke to me. Is the psychological suffering on an event or a non-event, which is the reason for human suffering, not the pain, the, su yeah. the psychological suffering. Psychological suffering, yes. And you're asking me, is there a method for ending that? Is that a, correct? The idea, the idea of, of the idea of a method is the suffering. Then how do I remove the psychological suffering? If I have a toothache, I have a dentist. If I have a psychological suffering, what do I do? Is the question. There's nothing to be done. When there is a when there is a dental problem, there is a solution. There is a method. There is a dentist. But, but when there's a psychological problem, what do I do? Short of going to a psychologist. Well, yes, on a on a on a relative level, you can go to a psychologist and have psychotherapy, and you, your suffering may change into something a, a bit less drastic and painful. That's possible. But to be without suffering, even the desire to be without suffering is, is a form of suffering. It, it's hard to get your mind around it, Ilongo. I know that, but that's the method. If there's a method, if there isn't a method. But if, if there were, if I were writing a method, the method would be snapped out of it. <laughs> I understand. Okay. Thanks very much, Ilongo. Thank you so much, Thanks very much. for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thanks. Nice to meet you. And thank you, non duality. Yes. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Ilongo. Take care. Pardon? Be well, Ilongo. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Yes. So, this, this is our last question, and we've reached the two hours mark. So, I would say uh, we, can, we can kind of wrap it up here, um, unless there is something that needs to be said. But otherwise, I would uh, like to thank you both very much, Jim Newman, for your for your work of in all of your life, and also Robert Salzman, very much. I love you both. Uh, thanks very much. You you've been good antidote for for a lot of uh, bullshit that I was holding before. So uh, thanks very much. Yeah, I'd I say thanks I as well. Yes, I, I want to thank you, Jim, for participating in this. It was uh, very good to hear from you directly rather than your detractors. <laughs> Got a few of those. Yeah, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, Robert. Okay, good to see you good both. Care. take good care of yourself, man.